Oh, 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 it's cold. Cold, cold. Got my number. But man, it's cold out there. It's going to be warmer today, but right now it's cold, cold, cold. It was good. I mean, I had a blast. Hey cycling community, this is Steve Rusis the Cycling Greek. When people initially think of the Snelling Road Race course, they think of the predominantly flat course, which it is. However, there are some small climbs and rollers that can have quite an effect on the race, especially at speed. I'm going to focus on two of those areas, R1 and R2, because you can't carry any momentum into them. They start right after 90 degree turns. This is an 11.7 mile loop that we do four times. My goal for this race is to enter Blood Alley in with a pack at the last lap. As we first enter the course from our 3.7 mile promenade, we are hitting that first roller section at full speed. Unlike last week's race where I participated in a 20 strong 55 plus open category, this week's race is 60 strong of 55 plus 123s. Where R1 is a true roller section, the lead into R2 is kind of a false flat. You make the turn and then it goes steep. You go for a bit and then you make another turn. It still stays steep but then it starts to shallow off a bit to the top. It's that section that kills me. The only way I can survive this is by buffering. That means starting off the climb in the top 25% of the pack, hanging on for dear life and as I start to weaken and start to fall back, by the time I get to the top, I'll still be part of the pack and have wheels to hang on to. Even though I had a quality 20 minute warm up on the trainer and that 3.7 mile promenade to the start, my 64 year old racing age body seemed to have trouble adjusting to the fast speed of this first lap. Still, I didn't have any problem with this lap 1 R2 section. This bridge is getting worse and worse, as are some other sections. I've done this race for years and really appreciated when different areas have been resurfaced. However, this being a low traveled rural farm road, this is just something that we have to deal with. The turn from Blood Alley to the finishing straight was another tough section for me because it also involved rollers. I had to make sure that I buffered here even though I did a bad job in this lap. Each time a gap would open up. I'd have to use high cadence spinning to get the speed up to try and close it before I had to shift, but the bad roads made it tough. I just didn't have the leg strength that the others did. I finished that first lap thinking, this goal is going to be tough for me to reach. By the time we hit the turn at the start of the R1 roller section, I had recovered and moved up creating a buffer. That finishing straight roller section was tough with its bad rows and its small climb with the finish line on top. Again with small gaps in front of me, I'm using high cadence spinning to try and survive this. Every bit of my buffer is needed. Each time through, I'm just showing you the major roller. There's another small roller after this. Even though there were a couple of sections on this course that stretched me, this second lap seemed to be a lot easier for me. I entered the R2 climb at the top 10% of the pack. As I approached the top, speeds increased and riders were attacking. I needed every bit of that buffer. In cases like the end of the second lap where I'm entering the finishing straight from Blood Alley and I don't have much of a buffer, I'm totally stretching myself in order to survive. We hit the bottom of the third lap R2 climb fast. High cadence spinning and buffering are the two components that help me to survive. But there's a lot of effort involved and it chips away at me. I'm able to move up, tuck in and stay protected. Well, as protected as one can on the climb. As I approach the top, I start to weaken as others start to attack. I'm losing ground, but I don't panic because I know there's quite a few people behind me. Thank you, buffering. Finishing the third lap, there's no buffering for me as I'm pretty much at the back of a fast moving pack. The front of the pack hits that corner 8 seconds before I do from the back. One reason I'm at the back is that the cattle pin roller section that you haven't seen in this video leading into Blood Alley nearly dropped me. Even though both my quads were showing signs of cramping, hitting this last lap first roller section, I had a sense of relief. Relief that I was not only going to survive this, but I was going to hit my goal.
That relief was short-lived as my leg muscles were literally starting to fail me. As I alluded to earlier, there's a lot more character to the course that was stretching me. With my condition being such as it was, and this being the last lap, try as I might, there was no way I could create a buffer for myself. I was hoping there was a lot more people behind me than I thought, but I knew better. With the top in sight and me still technically part of the pack, there was a chance I could survive this. Ah, a kingdom for another 20 meters. Divine intervention is now needed. A rider did come by. However, if I was at least as strong as he, we would have had a chance to connect. My goal for this race was not met, but it was a great day to race. Comment, like, subscribe, The Cycling Greek.